So the brilliant hosts and analysts over at CNN decided to do a segment discussing Oprah 2020. And uh, Jake Tapper asked a Democratic strategist what he thinks about the idea. And the response is pretty much as sad as it gets. You're a, a, de a Democratic operative, if you'll pardon the expression. Um, don't you think if she entered the race, she would jump to the top of the heap? Yeah, I do. Um, I have no idea if she's going to run. I don't know what her position is on most policy issues. I certainly don't think that the party needs to lurch for some celebrity answer to Donald Trump. I think we have a good stable of potential candidates. So we don't need Oprah. But if she got into the race, would she be a huge force to be reckoned with? Perhaps even the favorite? Absolutely. I think it would be electric. I think there's a lot of sort of wise people in Washington today sort of scoffing at this and they're talking about, hey, the public usually likes somebody that's different from the previous president. So the Democratic uh, primary voters are not going to want to vote for a celebrity to answer a celebrity in Donald Trump. I think that does a disservice to Oprah. Uh, you can be a celebrity and be famous before entering politics without being Donald Trump. She is somebody that over 30 years has demonstrated an ability to uniquely inspire people, to relate to people. She showed an intellectual curiosity that Donald Trump just doesn't possess a big heartedness that I think would make her a very appealing candidate if she decided to wow. run. Oprah, I think I found your campaign spokesman. <laughs> um. Time for your uh, frequent reminder that Democratic strategists have been perpetually wrong about everything for decades now. I just want you to understand that. It was the Democratic strategists who said, well, Hillary Clinton would be a shoe-in versus Donald Trump. They literally did what they called the Pied Piper strategy during the 2016 primaries. And they said, what we need to do, us Democrats, we need to go out on all the, the news shows and prop up Donald Trump because we, on the Hillary team, want to run against Donald Trump for president because we know, as a matter of fact, we'll beat that guy because that guy's a buffoon. So let's act like he's the most serious. Let's prop him up. And then when he wins on the Republican side, oh, easy sailing for us and the general election is a cakewalk. That's what the Democratic strategist said. It was the Democratic strategist who lost a thousand seats under Obama and Pelosi and Schumer's leadership. A thousand seats. Think about that. This mind-numbingly stupid Republican Party that tried to repeal Obamacare over 60 times. Their whole position is, we want to take away people's health care. The Democrats lost over a thousand seats to those people. To those morons. This is a Democratic Party that stands for nothing. It's just platitudes and cliches. This neoliberal establishment corporatist party has been a joke every step of the way. I mean... They barely beat a pedophile, a pedophile fundamentalist theocrat. They won by what, less than two points? This is how bad this party is. So they've been wrong about everything. And then here they come. Here come the genius Democratic strategists to let you know that Oprah 2020 is probably a good idea. And I love how stupid many of the arguments are. He said at the end, she has a big heartedness that Trump doesn't have. How fucking trivial, you know, like, she's big hearted. What does that mean? She's big hearted. That, what that means is I, she's not as shitty a person as Donald Trump. Wow, what a fucking expi inspiring argument. Oh, yes. Big hearted. She's not as bad a person as Donald Trump. Amazing. That's so amazing. It's such a trivial point to make. And then uh, he says, all the wise people in Washington are scoffing at this. No, quite the opposite. All the wise people in Washington, like you, you douchebag! All you guys are like, I think this is a great idea! We just did the segment of Bill Crystal, neocon, saying, I think it's a great idea! I think Oprah could be Donald Trump! So, all the wise people in Washington are saying, Oprah 2020, yes! And the main reason behind this, he said at the beginning, quote, I don't know what her position on most policy issues is. That's why they find Oprah so appealing. Hey, she's already famous. She's already famous. She's a TV billionaire, success story, already famous. Black woman too. So man, wouldn't it be powerful if a minority uh, defeats Donald Trump, the ultimate like arrogant white man? But she's a blank slate. I don't, I don't know what her position on most issues is. Oh, so we can download the uh, neoliberal mantra 
into her head. That's what we can do. We can make her say, oh, isn't incrementalism great? Don't worry about Medicare for all. Just do tweaks around the edges to Obamacare. Isn't that the way to go? I think that's the way to go. Oh, no, you want to do a living wage? No, no, no. Reel it back in. Maybe $10 minimum wage. Maybe we could do that. You know, let's take, let's take little steps here. Let's not go crazy. You want free college? No, let's not, don't do free college. Do some sort of weird means testing and uh, something, you know, now don't go all the way to free. Wow. You want unions? No, unions, they have problems. I wouldn't be in favor of strong unions. Come on now. That's why they like her. By the way, we already know, based on uh, things she's already said in the past, she was for the Iraq war, and she was ag she's against the estate tax. Gee, I wonder why. Because <laughs> she's got a zillion dollars in the bank. So she's not a real populist leftist like Bernie Sanders. She doesn't have a commitment to a living wage and Medicare for all and free college and a new New Deal and legalizing marijuana and all the things, ending the wars, all the things that the Democratic base is screaming, do these things and we'll vote for you. She's not on that page. So that is exactly what these guys want. The Democratic elite want a moderate Republican to be president. That's what they want. That's what Hillary Clinton was. Voted for the Iraq war, voted for various outsourcing deals, was for uh, deregulating Wall Street. She went down there and shook her finger and said, cut it out with all of your ruining the economy. You know? Um, so that's what they want. They want somebody who's kind of for war still and still willing to sit around in a room with Wall Street bankers and say, hey, your voice is as important as the grandma who's getting screwed over in Cleveland right now. This is what they want. And in Oprah, they see that, hey, we get all the upsides of somebody who's popular. She's already popular. She was on TV for all those years. Everybody knows Oprah. That plus she'll do neoliberal shit. So that's why we want Oprah 2020. Again, I can't get over how backwards the arguments are. She's big hearted. What the fuck does that even mean? Uh, wise people in Washington are scoffing. No, across the board, people in Washington are like, this is a great idea. You know who's scoffing? The base of the Democratic Party. Actual leftists are like, what? No, we want fucking people who care about the policies. And then he even, think about how sad that is. He gives it away. I don't know what her position on most policy issues is. Wouldn't that be the end of the analysis for you? Because look, all I care about is policy. That's it. That's all I care about. That's it. That's what, when I choose a candidate, it's based on policy. That's what it's based on. So, but for clowns like this, they don't, they put the cart before the horse. They go, um, yeah, let's, um, I don't know what she thinks on policy, but I like her. So we're going to go with her and then we'll worry about the policy later. Then why? So then obviously you're not involved in politics because you care about changing people's lives for the better by doing the correct policy. That's not why you're involved in politics because you just said, I don't know what her position is on most issues, but I think she'd be great. That's like saying, I don't know if she'd be great, but I, she'd be great. No, that doesn't make sense. You don't know if she'd be good, but she'd be good. What? Doesn't make any sense. But that's the thing is they don't care about policy. They do care, but they care about not the same policy you care about. They don't want the same things you want. They don't want to actually make this country a social democratic country. So it's like, whatever. Oh, we're, we'll fill in those details later. As long as she keeps the status quo to one extent or another, we're good with her. I don't know what her policy positions on most issues are, but man, wouldn't she be a great candidate? Well, no, absolutely not. And thank you for admitting. This is the Democratic Party. This is a Democratic strategist admitting... We don't care about uh, populist left ideas. Because we're not saying, oh, we're for Oprah because she's for Medicare for all and free college and a living wage. They're saying, I don't know what she believes on those things. She'd probably keep the status quo going, but great candidate. <sighs> it's just so sad to... Guys, we can't, we can't let them win again. We have to get real left candidates elected. We have to do it. We have to do it. You have to support people who are right on the issues, and you have to take no shit in the process. I don't care who it is, man. Whether we're talking about Ro Khanna or Tulsi Gabbard or, or Bernie Sanders, you know, whether we're talking about the new up-and-coming candidates like Paula Jean Swearingen or Allison Hartson, you have to, have to, have to go to the mat for them because nobody else will.